Então, como é que pode não dar um limite? Okay. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Reserve Bank and our biannual financial stability review. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Grant Spencer, uh, Deputy Governor. Um, now, the, go the governor normally, the governor and I normally do this jointly, but unfortunately, the governor has had a bereavement in the family, so he won't be able to join us uh, this morning. But I do have with me Bernard Hodgetts, who's head of macro financial stability, the area that looks after that produces this uh, this document. So <coughs> um, the key message of this review is that the risks facing New Zealand have increased, and this is largely due to the Euro sovereign debt crisis. Indeed, not just in Europe, but in many countries, financial systems remain under stress due to an overhang of private and public debt. The markets have been particularly concerned about the situation in Greece and the potential for contagion to other countries and to the banking system. And this has made access to the offshore debt markets more challenging for New Zealand's banks. In New Zealand, um, households and businesses have been containing debt, which has helped to reduce the country's overall external imbalance. However, this has been offset in part by rising uh, levels of public debt. Further, many households and farmers remain highly leveraged, which leaves them vulnerable to any downturn in the global economy. Turning to the banking system, uh, we believe the banks are better placed to weather the current financial storm than they were back in 2008 at the start of the financial crisis. <coughs> the banks have significantly increased both their capital and liquidity buffers um, in recent years. Uh, they now have a much stronger retail uh, funding base. And, and the term of their wholesale funding is now a much, much longer. So this makes them less vulnerable to disruptions in offshore markets. But uh, given the uh, current market tensions, um, however, we have decided to defer by six months the planned further increase in the core funding ratio, which was to have occurred uh, mid next year, from 70 to 75 percent, that will now be pushed out six months and will take place in January 2013. So this will give the banks a bit more latitude in managing their funding programs uh, over the coming period. On the policy side, we have continued to progress a number of regulatory initiatives. Um, a couple of days ago, we put out a consultation document on Basel III, um, where we are expecting that the capital requirements will be increased to match the new um, international standards. We've also been in discussion with the banks on pre-positioning their systems for our open bank resolution policy. And finally, um, in the insurance sector, uh, we have issued new solvency standards and we're very busy uh, processing applications under the new uh, licensing framework. So um, we're happy to open up to questions. I would say um, that uh, we won't be commenting on any uh, party political issues, but certainly happy to answer questions on the uh, financial stability review. So, any uh, any questions? How much have these global so how much have these global risks intensified since the last uh, monetary policy statement and then the last OCR statement in October? Well, <coughs> the situation I think you know it's it's been up and down, up and down, and I think definitely it, the situation is worse. Now, um, we had a lot of build-up to the 
uh, proposed uh, European package that was meant to sort of solve the problems, clearly uh, that package did not gain the confidence of the markets. Um, there's been um, problems in Greece, uh, political problems with uh, the referendum being called, and now a change of government there. Um, there's some suggestion that they will now knuckle down and put the, the new Greek program in place, but clearly that country is still under a lot of pressure. There's still a high probability that um, there will be effectively a default in Greece and therefore the market's worrying about the contagion effects from that to other countries and to the banking system. And clearly um, they're particularly worried right now about the implications for Italy which has a very large amount of public debt um, and you know the concern is that if, if, if that is the next domino after Greece then that could be a real problem because of course it's a much larger country with a much larger amount of debt. Obviously this, this text would have been finalised before what we've seen in, I mean, last night in Italy and, and the last couple of days with their, um, with their interest rates going much higher. Yes. And, and so could say it's sort of day in, day out and it's just getting worse by the by the day. Would you say things have it's a bit hard to say, but would you say things would have even got worse since you finalised the text? Well, it's not I don't think it's worse by the day. It tends to come and go. You know, we still have days of risk on, risk off. Last night was a sort of risk off night. Uh, the Kiwi fell, uh, stock markets fell. But it, it's, there's, a vol there's volatility and I think that volatility will continue and I think that's our main concern that this is likely to continue for months and could easily go into next year and that's why we're, we have given the banks a, a little bit more latitude with their funding so even though they have good funding buffers at present and they're not having to rush out into the markets we didn't want to put the pressure on of, of pushing the core funding ratio up further next year because you know these issues could well be flowing into next year but uh, you know we're not we don't want to overstate them it's it's not the end of the world um, New Zealand is still more dependent on Asia um, than Europe um, Asia and China is still growing quite strongly commodity prices have come off but they're still at high levels so we're not trying to this, these are risks they're not actual outcomes and you know we're still seeing in the New Zealand economy a reasonably positive outlook. You said that uh, a drop in private debt being offset by the rise in public debt. Sorry, you, you said that a, a, the drop in private debt has been offset by a rise in public debt. Do you um, accept that sort of nominal figure that has been set of uh, trying to keep public debt at no higher than 30% net debt no higher than 30 percent of GDP? Um, yes, I, th I think that is um, certainly um, a reasonable target, something that can be achieved and something that we support. So, you know, public debt has increased in New Zealand, but clearly the public debt at sort of 30 percent or 30 percent gross, 20 percent net, I think at present, is still relatively low by these international standards when you look at Europe, Greece, Italy, etc. Uh, but we want to make sure that um, we don't get up to those higher levels and so the government's objective is to reduce those levels and uh, we certainly support that. What, what levels though would start to worry you if it started pushing above that? Where, where would you start to get worried? I think uh, the, the main um, <coughs> target, the main thing to achieve is the trend rather than any particular level. I think it's important to achieve and show signs of achieving the fiscal consolidation that um, everyone's expecting, the market's expecting. So the markets are being positive towards New Zealand, they're buying our bonds um, and, and that confidence really requires um, evidence of just 
cons consolidation of going in the right direction. Um, there's some fairly cautious words in here about the currency. I think you, you've got warning about sharp possibility of a sharp deterioration was the, was the term used. Are you sort of talking down the currency at the moment? Oh, I don't, we never, never do that. But um, <laughs> no, I, we're not um, trying to uh, influence the currency in one direction or another. I think clearly um, we have felt over quite a period that the currency has probably been higher um, than justified on a, on a long-term basis. But right now, the, obviously, the currency is somewhat softer as a result of this risk-off environment in the markets, which, which has softened the currency. Now, there is a risk if things um, deteriorated further, obviously, that the currency could weaken, and um, that's mentioned in the document. But we don't, we don't see that as a high probability outcome. Um, you take comfort from the fact, and have for years, that a high proportion of New Zealand's overseas debt is denominated in New Zealand dollars. I wondered, though, if you see any, any risk to the ongoing ability of borrowers to sort of peel off the foreign exchange risk and find counterparties for the hedging. Is there any, any signs of stress there or any, any reason to think that the cost of that may climb? Well, um, Simon might, yeah, or Bernard might be able to comment on this, but I mean, the, co the cost of hedging has increased, there's no doubt about that. So the, the banks will typically raise funds in US dollars or euros or yen and then swap it back to New Zealand dollars. And that swap, the cost of the swap, um, has increased o over the past six months or so. Um, whether that's likely to deteriorate further, do you have any thoughts on that, Simon? Take the markets are still pretty efficient at the moment, and as Grant said, they're still pretty positive on, on New Zealand, so our banks are able to access funds um, and, and swap them in. Um, obviously, the global markets are pretty ugly, but um, there's no signs that they can't uh, get rid of their currency risk when they decide to borrow money offshore. So, so there's still the appetite for New Zealand dollars, and that's seen, for example, in the government's uh, DMO's debt auctions, because a lot of the interest in those auctions comes from offshore. And so yeah, there's still that underlying appetite for New Zealand dollars, which means that the banks will be able to hedge their foreign borrowing. There also seems to be something of a catch-22 in your story. I mean, there's this theme of you know, debt equals risk. But you also say at one point that the lower debt appetite has weakened the recovery and could in turn make sustainable debt repayments more difficult. Now, what do you want, more, more, more debt or less debt? Well, certainly when we're talking about financial stability, we want less debt. Um, but I think that comment's really saying that um, you know, as we're seeing our businesses and households reducing debt, they're not spending as much, they're saving more, which means that tends to be a bit of a drag on domestic demand, and so the recovery that is not going to be as strong. But, you know, the, the, from a long, t in terms of achieving long-term sustainable growth, you do need to get debt levels down to sustainable levels. So, um, it's our view that it's better to consolidate and to get our balance sheet in shape um, rather than continuing to spend and, um, and accumulate more debt. The, um, the amount of funding that the banks have, um, there's quite a bit in the report about uh, things are uh, a lot more stable than they were in 2008. The, the, there still seems to be quite a big dependence on, on offshore and um, 